All right, I'm not gonna keep you waiting. This thing only lasts two hours and 30 minutes. No IP water resistance and uses micro USB. If that's a no-go to you, then move along. I'll be losing views, but I don't wanna waste your time. But if you're still interested or kind enough to watch my videos, well, let me tell you how this is still a great earbuds otherwise. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and today we'll be talking about the KZ-Z1. This impressed me so much by how it sounds during unboxing, but at the same time, it let all that excitement free fall after I tested its battery life. But let's talk about the sound quality first, shall we? As I've said, this basically tramples over everything below its price. 34 US dollars. And that's the main thing with the Z1. For the first time in forever, what they said in the website is actually not some marketing bull. You really get the extraordinary balance three frequencies here. The details in the highs are just as good as the KZS1. The bass is similar to the Transmart Spunky Beat, but it's not overdone, so it's more detailed, but it's got the punch as well, unlike the GT1 Plus. And this just basically nails every frequency range. Yes, the focals are still bright and clear, but even the spunky beats feel more piercing than this. I know some of you said that KZS1 is fatiguing. I imagine you will do much better here. And the next most important aspect is the sound stage, which basically is better than everything again. It's better than KZS1 by a huge margin, Transmart Spunky Beats as well. So how is it like? The vocals are forward and the rest spreads to the side while not losing focus. Each of the instruments shine and you can throw any genre to it and it will sound amazing. And on top of that, this is the loudest earbuds that I've ever listened to. Putting Impel T5, Edifier, Sabbath, everything aside. 45% here is like 80% on this Monkey Beat and GT1 Plus and also it's somewhere around 60% for the KZS1 and S1D. TLDR, it's got amazing sound that I bet I would pick this even when compared to MPOW T5, Edifier TWS1 and Sabbath E12 Ultra and I really mean it. Unfortunately, I left them all in China so I can't compare to them in detail. We get it. It's got great sound what are the sacrifices? Number one, it's the battery life. Of course, I am not forgetting it. It's a measly 30 milliamp hour battery that KZ claims to last three hours on 50% volume. And in my testing, it lasted two hours, 32 minutes to be exact at 50%. And I have to mention that 50% is very loud. I cannot listen to it indoors. There's no way I can listen to it at that volume. So I was thinking maybe if I lower the volume, the battery will improve, right? Wrong. I put it at 25% with Siri and shockingly, it still lasts pretty much the same time. So that made me wonder, maybe we just cannot improve the battery life here at all by lowering the volume. Just that 10 millimeter driver is drawing a great deal of energy at base level, no matter what volume we're listening at. And I imagine it only goes down from there. If only Casey went with a slightly bigger battery, I don't mind increasing the Z height here if it has 40 milliamp hour, 60 milliamp hour, that would be great. I think things would go a very different route. So the way it is currently, no matter how good the experience is, if it doesn't last long enough, well, it's no good. But one thing I want to emphasize is it lasts two hour and a half. And don't forget that 30 minutes because I see out of reviews and they're telling it it lasts two hours. It's kind of making the situation worse here by just forgetting 30 minutes there. So I want to make myself clear here. The second one is the amount of background hiss. With the other earbuds, maybe I don't uh, notice it as much, but this is more than what I'd like. And I cannot pass this out, just ignore it. Especially if you listen at lower volumes, you can definitely notice it, but it's not that hard to ignore. And when the music goes up, you can just enjoy the music just fine. Also, the hiss is there a couple seconds before and after you press that play or pause. But when idle, it disappears. Like after a couple seconds, after you you pause, it disappears. So now the third sacrifice, it's a lack of IP water resistant rating. It's just like the KZ-S1 review, I said it that I don't really trust these cheap earbuds manufacturer enough for me to actually drop and water test my earbuds, but having nothing sometimes make me feel 
less confident. So far, I haven't had any issues with my KZ-S1. Uh, I had that for a while, but it depends on you and how you use your earbuds. All right, now, before checking the latency and call quality, let's talk about some things that I haven't addressed yet. First, the touch control. It is great. It's basically the same as KZ-S1, and aside from the lack of volume control, the sensitivity is great. And it's not a problem at all, unlike some other earbuds. <laughs> And for the build quality, fit of the earbuds, this is something that shines on the Z1. I love, love, love the fit here. These earbuds stay in the ear like a champ. Once I put them in, I never have to readjust them. No matter how big I open my mouth or raise my eyebrows, they go back into place. I don't have to adjust it, not even once. This is really not only the best sounding earbuds, it's also the best fitting earbuds I've ever tried so far. It's really that great. Let's talk about the case now. Except from the micro USB port, which I'm so disappointed to find out. It should be the USB-C cable, right? It should be USB-C, right? 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 Why? It has a bigger battery, 400 milliamp hour. It's better built compared to the KZ-S1. It has a colored battery indicator that automatically turns on, green, yellow, red. So it's good, but maybe the 400 milliamp hour battery here will end up feeling like a 300 milliamp hour battery because these earbuds doesn't last very long. Anyway, enough talking. Let's check out the latency test and the call test here. test right now we're gonna test the KZ Z1 and we're gonna take one out okay here on okay so we are on the KZ Z1 right now I figure it should be on the right side because the right side say is connected so they do have voice prompts and also the good thing about Z1 that is not present on the S1 is the voice prompt when activating game mode so after you triple tap the right side you will hear high performance mode or standard mode. That's when you know which mode you are in. So this is how the KZZ1 sounds indoors. Let's go outside and see how it performs. All right, even though it's dark outside now, I have to keep recording. And this is the sound from the KZZ1. Right now we are pretty close to the street, so there should be some motorcycle sounds going around. So see if you can hear that or can you only hear my voice Clearly, in my experience, it is pretty good. Basically, the only downside of this thing is just the battery life. All right, that's pretty much it for the call test. Let's go inside and finish the video. So, in summary, the KZ Z1. It sounds so good that I think it's absolutely worth the extra 10 bucks over Transmart Spunky B, Halo GT1 Plus, KZ S1, basically all my top five picks just 
for the sound quality alone. It also fits great in the ear. I love it so much and the touch sensitivity is great. Also, if you really like to listen at very high volume, this might be your only choice below 50 bucks. It's even louder than the Ampow T5. That's my loudest earbuds before this. Of course, I don't recommend it, obviously. Now, the question is, are your listening sessions gonna be short bursts? Like you're gonna be using this at your commute, uh, going to between class or going to work, and are they gonna be less than two and a half hours? Or is it gonna be for a long period of time? You're gonna sit down in your office and just listen to some music while you're working. You're gonna work out for something longer than two hours and a half. And also it's important to see if you're gonna be using Using this close to water or are you gonna be sweating a lot and can you accept that slight background hiss for me it's a worth it trade-off for the sound you're getting here but yeah I don't know about the battery life it's a hard ask really so that is the main deal breaker for a lot of people and I hope successor to the KZZ one just let everything be the same and slap on a bigger battery to it and I think everyone will be happy I hope the KZZ 2 will be a good middle ground for now between the sound quality and the battery life and the features and all we shall see okay that's it for me thank you so much for watching if you're not planning to get it feel free to share what's in your mind down in the description below and also always don't forget to click the thumbs up button subscribe i'm available on twitter and instagram if you have more questions and you would like to ask them personally once again thank you so much for stopping by and stay safe everyone